Welcome back, Zero K fans! Sorry about people who are trying to watch on Twitch if, well, okay, there actually is no one trying to watch on Twitch right now because it wasn't on. Yeah, I had it on Twitch, but then OBS messed up my settings for whatever reason. Anyway, sorry about that. So, back on both Twitch and Hitbox, as I normally am, and Floris remains with me. I'm still here. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to be having Drone, Yogstoth versus Hokomoko and Kane. So Drone, Yogstoth, that is a scary team to fight against Hokomoko. But neither Hokomoko and Kane are particularly team-oriented players as far as I know. Kane is a quite strong 1v1 player, has actually also started casting on their own. Which has been interesting. Yes, it is. He has some... Uh, he's very productive. He puts out uh, a dozen games per week almost. Yeah, well, yes, Half certainly. Dozen. Really been pushing a lot that... <laughs> But, yeah, I don't know how well they're gonna, going to do here. And against, as Drone and Yogstoth is such a scary team. Even if you're a good player, it's going to be a very, very uphill battle. And then, of course, you win against yeah. them and you're against the Mii Machine players. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's yeah. going to be tough. Okamoko isn't a uh, pushover either. No, that's... Let's double check. I haven't really seen much of Okamoko's play. Mostly... Hokomoko has been someone who's been helpful in general with the casts, like technical side stuff. We only have 1760 LO, so that's not bad. That's certainly a skilled player. So Hokomoko and Kane. Okay, so Kane hasn't really played much team based recently. So Hokomoko and yeah, Kane. Yeah, but 2v2 and 1v1 are. Uh, they are similar, that's well, true. Yeah, no, I'll, there's more relation. Between 1v1 and 2v2, then 10v10 and 2v2. Yeah, well, at the very least, that does mean Kane's going to have an easier time, but still, Drone <laughs> and Yogstoth. But yeah, Drone and Yogstoth, that's going to be both of them. Just So I'm curious how much cheese are we going to see. We're on iced coffee, and that is not a cheese-unfriendly map. I could <laughs> definitely see someone going for... Like gunship rush, blastwing rush, that sort of thing. I think I've seen that before. This map, actually. Raven rush. Yeah, Raven rush can well, work too. I think if you just you can do it pretty quickly. Actually, you can make three bombers and move down. The two of you make three bombers, and uh, one of the two players moves down after they're done, and you will hardly lose any time at all. Hmm. And you can snipe a commander instantly. Hey, what? Is how team counts. I don't think you can stop it, actually. Well, it looks like Hokomoko and Kane... Hokomoko going for Amphib. Kane going for Air, which makes sense. Hokomoko going for Amphib. Drone and Yogstoth are communicating in Mumble, so we have no idea what they're actually planning until they finally do so. It looks like Hokomoko having a bit of trouble with the Shift button... There, with using Shift in pre-planning mode. Yogstoth also going for air, and Drone has not decided their factory yet. But we have... Drone going for jump bot factory. And Amphibs. So are we going to see the dreaded uh, scallop drop? Well, no. no it's because not gunships. That's not gunships. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is not going to be the case. That is not what's going to happen. We are going to see ducks, however. That is going to be the main raid force, and it looks like Kane is much more focused on getting air control than they are on trying to get any ground damage. Getting, Both players started air. Yeah, getting the early crane. Oh, wow. Getting the crane. early... Girdle, the early swift into a crane. Interesting choice. Especially on this map. I mean, it's not like it's... Okay, never mind. Switching over to Hawk. I'm thinking, it's not like you really need a crane to get it around. This isn't something like... Bandit planes, where having a crane just allows you to get everywhere. It's not that fast. Oh, darn it, did it again. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, yeah, it's not that fast. So I don't know why that is... That was the strategy of choice there, but yeah, that's... No that, shadow. Well, I think, like I said, they're trying to get air control. Oh, this hawk is buzzing out. Mm-hmm. Two shadows? 
It's nice that you can uh, hide those ducks in their little ponds. Well, that's what they're for. They're little foxholes for, for amphibious units. Unfortunately, that was spotted out, so Hokomoko only able to hide one of them in there. Not able to hide both. So hiding one closer to home as well, but yeah, it looks like... Like I said, Kane is trying to secure air control. That is their primary priority. They want to get that going. They still are going for the crane, but they want to get the air control very badly. And then once that's done, then they're going to go try and get rid of these... Well, get rid of the ravens, and then make ravens of their own, most likely. <coughs> now he needs if he wants to use that uh, left duck, he would need uh, that fighter to be over there, so he could do that little raid. Yeah, and also get rid. Well, okay, the bombers coming here. Swift's coming in here. I mean, drone and Yogstoth. That was just random. Swift coming in that happened to see, that happened to spot that duck, but still, it spotted the duck. But Hawk's taking that out, so at least that is something. Oh, that was risky. Ducks firing in the air is always a dangerous proposition. It's the only way they can friendly fire themselves. Which, knowing ducks, that is what they want to do. Ducks friendly fire everything. The only <laughs> reason they don't friendly fire themselves is because they can't set themselves as a target. Nice use the voxel, though. Okamoko popping <laughs> in and out. Unfortunately, being spotted out and it destroyed. Shot a torpedo at its, at its, at its feet. At the pyro feet. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. The pyro was just in the water and then uh, it got torpedoed. <laughs> well, it looks like it's not going to last too long and yeah. Archer is taking it out. Water beats fire. Sometimes. <laughs> Usually fire beats water. But yeah, in this case, it's actually going to follow Pokemon rules. Still, Hokomoko... is using his aircrafts almost purely defensively and he just takes... Uh, Use the system to take his, uh, their part of the map. Hawk too. There it goes. I mean, Kane's entire plan was build hawks, smash air, and it's not working. No. Nope. And the Ravens coming here. The Ravens going to get rid of the commander. The that of is there. dead. Very dead. Kane, I'm sorry, you just lost your commander there. That is a big blow. And I mean, they are going to get rid of at least one of the Ravens, but still. Oh, two of the Ravens? Oh wow! All three of the Ravens go down. That hawk definitely they, made it worse. I think they got hit by the commander explosion or something. Yeah, that damaged them, and then the hawk managed to finish them off, although the hawk died in the process. Just barely not crashing into the base as well. That was close. They still had an archangel. Despite uh, their three shifts. But it looks like Shift, the, swifts. Yeah, it looks like the only air is going to be crane. Otherwise, it just looks like it's going to be nothing. Actually, it's crane, more cranes. Kane is going heavy crane. While Kane Hokumoku, to crane. Hokomoko, on the other hand, getting the ducks. They have them kind of laid out, but they're not working very well. They aren't managing to get a lot of damage. They aren't raiding where they need to. There's just defenses everywhere. It becomes very difficult to do anything with this situation. No, they don't need to. They just need to build defenders and make sure they own more than half of the map. And that's exactly what Droid and Yogg-Soth have done. Yeah, that's what they're what they'll continue doing. Yeah, there's not really any easy lane. <laughs> <laughs> there's a slight lane on the north side. Oh, yeah, thanks, Chesty. Anyway, there's a slight lane on the north side that is going. This may be useful. He's only just the Lotus that defends it. I don't know. There really isn't much, especially since Kane has stopped going for air at all. It's not going for anything at all, really. Rather surprising that they actually have the stronger economy of the two. But Hokomoko is drone and stuff. Why is it weird? What? No, no, it's not weird. No, I'm saying Kane. Kane has the stronger economy, but isn't doing anything with it. Hokomoko building a missile no, silo, oh. and that's it. Kane not building anything. Oh no, Kane's helping out. Okay, Kane's helping with the missiles. No, Kane's helping with air. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. Hey, what type of uh, artillery do you have as a? Uh... Um, uh, amphibious player. I think the only Grizzly? real artillery or is the Grizzly, which is a 2,000 metal unit. So yeah. it's quite funny. They have an aircraft and um, amphibious, so they don't have cheap artillery to take care of the defenders. Nope, so they're going for the expensive stuff. Missile silo. And that has just <laughs> been spotted out too. Swift does see it, so... Yogstoth and Drone, well aware that there is something going on here. 
And yeah, and PvP units are nice for trickery, but when it comes to real fighting, pork breaking. Well, missile silos are great for dealing with defenses. That's for sure. I mean, it's not like that's a big oh, yes. problem. It's just that it's a well, one one shot. You yeah. cannot. It, it one works as an addition missile. to your existing army. Not to. You cannot use it as a fighting unit of its own. Okay, but you need to be an army fair, to go with the missile, look, otherwise there's no. Look point at Yogstoth's setup. Yogstoth has defenders all along the front line. Drone has defenders all along the front line, and that's about it. There's a couple defenders in their main base, but that's it. If they crush a line, if they break any of them, or as Arnke points out, if they land an inferno inside of their of the main base, that is a massive blow. Mostly if they hit the front, then at that point they can just push through with archers and ducks don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> Looked it. Although even the center is pretty open. Drone trying to defend the center but unfortunately does not do it in time and that commander is forced to retreat. The duck's able to get rid of this lotus. And bomber's yeah, trying to get rid of them. Yeah, a lot of units for nothing. Yeah, unfortunately did not quite get rid of the commander but still got rid of a bomber. And yeah, the that's first... kind of the problem. If you're ahead and you're behind defenders, you don't need to do much. Every move your opponent makes will make you stronger. You really need artillery or some way to do damage without getting damaged yourself. Like Infernos. Which I know. Oh yeah, main base. Me. Main base assault from is that where it is? Yes, it is. The main base is getting attacked directly, and that is gonna get rid of a <laughs> lot of wind generators. Not the best target though. Bit of damage. Yeah, but they lose their build power for a second. That's true. They nearly lost a Raven too. Oh, almost killed the caretaker. Oh, the caretaker actually is still gonna die. So caretaker goes down. That's a lot of build power to lose. Oh, that was that was actually pretty good, and it looks oh, yes. like oh, they didn't snipe the, the silo. No, they didn't, and they actually they lost a bomb in the process trying. And another, there we go. This is what I was looking for. This is the defense breaker, Inferno right on top of the defender nest, smashing yeah, that okay, open and allowing. <laughs> now yeah, nice they've made a hole in a defensive line, and there's no army. Yeah, that's the only problem. Where was the army? Oh, there it is. It's underwater. There's, there's no army. There's a few ducks that's underwater. Nice. That's about it. That, I see two ducks, or a couple of ducks, that's not an army. That's a lot of quack. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> good point well stated. However, I th still think that this is a good plan. I mean, the only thing is they need to make sure that happens before, well, the sumo gets in for one thing, but mostly before it gets rebuilt. That is still a very nice opening, though. It's it's not a perfect yeah. opening. There, the west side of the map really could be taken out further. And Yogg-Sothoth has taken the southwest very convincingly. This is... I mean, dealing with this is going to be tricky. Yeah, I don't see it being too easy for Kane and Hokomoko to be able to break this as well, but they are... They're setting up to try, from the looks of it. Oops, what am I doing? F4. What the... Oh, what? Oh, F2, there we go. That's what I wanted. Anyway, yeah, there's no easy way for those ducks to get back up, so... Yeah, they can't really I do I think much. they can... They could use that silo to snipe commander. I think that's an idea. Yeah, but at this point, I think... Well, I don't see them using that. And Kane and Hokomoko, they have to deal with the silo as well. Drone and Yogg's have to build one. So both players with the nukes. Or with the missiles. And into the west side of the map, and Inferno goes. And with the ducks following him to get rid of everything after the defenders go down. So that, at oh. least that frees up the west side of the map. Maybe they'll re-expand to there. Kane going for a Clokebot factory to try to help support this. But honestly, the sumo's already here. Ah, oh, but the, the duck was flying and landed nicely in the water. <laughs> oh. That was funny. Damn, I wish I had seen that. Anyway. Sumo is coming in, though, and that is... Yeah, that's a huge problem there with the gravity guns. Just throwing the ducks everywhere. <laughs> That's sumo. I mean, on this map, sumos are <laughs> this really is powerful. This at its best. Well, yeah, because on this map, because of the height difference in the main base, the sumo is such a pain. As the gravity guns usually don't do that much damage, but because it can throw things over its head because of the ramp here, that makes a big difference. And shield... Well, a shield generator in the main base to stop the napalm bombs. Kane and Okamoko have nothing else they can do. Throwing in the towel... That is game, but a very funny end of the game, at least. That was something. Sumo at, at its finest. Half his... Looks like his knee-deep in the snow. So that is going to be game one. Game two will be up in a moment. 
Hopefully the wind counter will actually remember what's going on. And then after that will be... Maybe game three. Maybe. Let's hope so. Well, I mean, Hokomoko and Kane held their own decently well. The only downside was the fact that they didn't have any other thing. They didn't really have much else to do. I mean, think about it. Once the once the half of the map was taken, it was defenders. Yeah, the ducks didn't do much. A lot were built at the early game, but they didn't do anything. They were sitting in a pond, but they couldn't see much and they couldn't shoot much. Yeah, that's and the thing. You gotta like those ponds are great for hiding, but pulling out of there, it's difficult to really truly hide it and get out. Not to make use of it, yeah. Because you have to you have to set up before it's like a tick and a roach. You have to set up before your opponent gets there so that you can pop out and surprise them. You can't really come in later on and then hide and then pop out. No, and they are, cannot snipe uh, constructors if they're bombers overhead because they need two or three uh, hits. And then the bombers are already on, uh, overhead. Yeah, that's the biggest. that's the biggest thing really was the use of the bombers. I mean... Kane had a decent idea going for the air control early on, and that was a good read. It was just that they didn't take full advantage of it. They built one Hawk, and that was it. They didn't build three or four, and then use that to tear apart the air force that Drone built. Oh, sorry, that Yogstoth built. Because Yogstoth had a great air force, but it was great air force. They had no way of dealing with anti-air. No, just surprising. not uh, flying into the anti-air. Yeah, so anyway, we are back with the game, and we have Drone yelling south over the northwest on Avalanche. This is going to be a quick game. We'll see if Hokomoko and Kane go for something cheesy. Clokebot and Light Vehicles? Probably not. Hokomoko and Kane are still playing this straightforwardly. I am very surprised. I mean, they are the weaker players, and typically weaker player is well advised to go for cheese. At least to get one win, even it out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if Anarchid, I do want to cast all semifinals as usual. So, please wait on that for me. I already mentioned in the tournament chat, just please wait for me. Which I know sounds a little bit awkward. And honestly, casting the semifinals is probably a bit of a slowdown. But it's worth having, I think. Oh! Crap, I'm sorry. I was just pointed out that the stream should have a delay. Yes, it should. I forgot about that. Oops. I can, however, set a delay, and so I will. Tanks and uh, vehicles and cloakies. What the? Against cloakies and vehicles. That's a nice mirror matchup. This should be a good game. No air. None at all, but this map is kind of hard to make air work in. It's small. Why? It's, well, okay, I guess you can kind of defend it if you're in the back, but it, there's a lot of raiding paths. It's very easy to get around. Smash of the air. That's player. why your your ravens are your best anti raiders. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Well, at any rate, neither player opting for that, even though your point is well taken. The players don't hear it. They don't go for it. They're instead going. Oh, wow, a morphed commander and another morphed commander. This is a really aggressive push by Hokumoku and King. Okay, here we go. This is what I was talking about. Rocket launcher and the and downside. Machine gun. Drone made two. Constructors at the start and made, didn't make any army at all. Wow, all the that, other team spent all their starting resources in, uh, in, uh, in units. That is the best possible situation for Hokomoko and Kane. Bar none. Yes. Although Drone and no, no, He shouldn't lose this slasher. He cannot lose this slasher. He should retreat it. No, he loses. No. Well, well it's. I mean, it's too bad. Covering too bad. for the other one, but yeah, you're right. It's... You cannot use slasher. It was a very, really, really, really good idea. But he wasted the slashers. Out. Yeah. It, it's, it's not enough, over, too. but it will be a lot harder now. Yeah, the mace is enough for reclaim to uh, slashers. That reclaim is pretty, pretty much He should keep his corner. He, uh, in his, okay. Oh, come on, you're not... Blah, 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 blah. You're not microing your units, uh, King. Kane, you can you do... Can, you can also... Remember the trees. They're free units. Just remember the trees. Ah, uh, the warriors are just on guard. Yeah, what the heck is going on? He's not doing anything. Yeah, That's Kane easy. is barely... They're focusing on their commander. They're pulling that back, but it's not going to live. I don't Oh, just barely. Understand. One of the warriors going down. The slasher's running forward, trying to get rid of... The commander goes down! Kane loses the commander, and with that, the game. 
There is no way to get back from this. That... That is pretty much it. A very good attempt, and they had the best situation too, with Drone having gone for the worker. Yogg's not being in the back. Being very far in the back, so any further reinforcements would have taken a while to get in. Pokemoko valiantly continuing the attempt, but I think this is... This is not gonna work. It was close though. I mean, it was you just, cannot it was a rely good on uh, auto fight. If you have three units, you micro them manually yourself. All three of them. Especially if you're going for a cheese like this. Yeah. Like, that's the thing with cheese and zero K is that's when you have to micro your butt off. Like you got to make sure everything works. Got to make sure nothing dies. I mean, Hokumoku is still pushing. They still have. A, they still have something of an economy. They're still getting slashers killed, but they're losing their own as well way too quickly. And this is defender's advantage for Drone and Yogstop. There's not much they can do. Kane trying to rush in with some Glaze, trying to deal with what they can, and they're going to damage a bit. Get rid of one Metal Extractor, maybe. At best. At best, one Metal Extractor. And, yeah, they successfully do so. They get rid of that. They get rid of one of the Glaives. They don't... They get rid of another one. Wow, Kane's actually doing a not bad job microing. But Hokomoko loses their commander. And, really, I don't see what choice they have other than surrendering. I mean, Yogstoth and Drone are going for a counterattack right now. They're set up, they're pushing out, and that's the resign. Pokemoko and Kane throwing the towel 2-0 for Yogstoth and Drone. I mean, they had the right idea with the cheese, but, man, that was not the way to go about it. Really was not. Yeah, that was uh, poor execution. Good idea, good strategy, poor execution. Oops. Yeah, so that little bit of a shame there. I mean, it's... I could have seen that going on. I could have seen that going to game three. That would have been nice. But that is not the case. Instead, we're going on to the semifinals. And the semifinals will be, at first, Prince Reaper and Clone versus... Flipstip and Norm. Wherever they are. Oh, they're here. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's, that's the one. So yeah, Prince Reaper and Clone are here, and we have... So we have semifinals, let's see. Oh, I've... Oh yeah, I guess for Lynx, you aren't familiar with this? It's not that so much they refer to them in the plural. They is a singular gender-neutral pronoun. It's the gender-neutral part that I refer to them with. Like, that's... It's just, it came up a while ago, I don't really want to get into too much detail, but basically... First, I didn't want to make sure, I wanted to make sure that people, that women, if there were any women, weren't feeling left out or hidden, and then I realized that transsexual people might end up not wanting to have their gender revealed, so then, and women might not either, but he is still kind of masking, so I decided to go with they, because I figured they would be the best option. Anyway, that aside, we're going on to game two. Sorry, semifinals, round one, not game two, game one. And it's going to be on Cold Snap, which is not a map I have seen much. I've seen it before, but not much. To go over it slightly beforehand. Let's see. Cold snap. Oh, this one, yeah. Yep. The one with the little arc going on. Yeah. It's, there's room for big games. Yeah, that's true. I'm curious what. There's this big open area in the, the south. Choice for, uh, loss. <laughs> oh, Anarchid. Okay, Hokum I'm sorry. There's something going on. Hokum I thought Anarchid was stream. Someone was stream cheating, and Anarchid was pointing it out. I don't think anyone was stream cheating. I mean, they might have been. I don't know, but I did put the delay on hitbox, so that should help. <clears throat> At least I think it will. I might need to stop and restart, so I'm going to do that right now. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be back in just a moment with the next round. <laughs> 